All right. So good evening, afternoon, morning, depending on where you are, everyone. This is my favorite part of webinars as the numbers slowly tick up as we see how many people are joining us this evening. So we'll hold on for a couple of minutes here and then we'll get started. All right, feel like we're in a pretty good place to kind of go ahead and kick things off. So good, hello everybody. Thank you all for joining us uh, today or you know, uh, good afternoon, depending on where you are. My name is Jordan Hale. I have the privilege of serving as um, director of the Office of New Student and Family Programs. And our team is really excited to offer this uh, educational opportunity to our parent family community. Um, we have a couple of great panelists who are talking about a really exciting initiative here at Duke. Um, and Quad X and, and our team is, is just really thankful they're taking the evening to spend with us. Um, just so folks know this is, is being recorded and so we're gonna capture that and um, it'll be made available to families for later viewing if you can't make it tonight. Um, but I did wanna go through a couple of introductory pieces before we turn it over to, to Gary and to Mary Pat. Um, so the first is, this is a new initiative our office is putting together. We think it's really important to communicate with families in a variety of ways. And we really have been able to take advantage of the digital space that we have via Zoom. Um, and so our hope is to for you all to hear from us twice a month, one via a um, webinar, and then once via uh, the newsletter that we send out every month. So we're really excited about this and think the continuous communication with, with you all, uh, particularly as we have a lot of new exciting initiatives taking place on campus will be really important. And we understand that our family community is one of our most important communities at Duke. So just thank you first and foremost for uh, trusting us with your most prized possession in most cases. Um, and for allowing us to spend some time with you um, um, here this evening. Uh, again, our November topic is Quad X. I'm sure many of you have heard about it and read about it from a variety of sources. We thought hearing from some of the most important sources would be helpful to just address any pieces that um, are exciting or that you just have direct questions about. So we're excited to do that today. Um, if you have questions, feel free to plop them in the Q&A function. Um, our team will be responding to those uh, kind of throughout the webinar um, via typing some responses, but also at the end, we'll save a couple of questions that are representative of the entire kind of scope of the presentation, and then we'll take it from there. We did want to take just a couple of seconds to introduce our speakers this evening. Uh, Mary Pat McMahon is our Vice President, Vice Provost for Student Affairs here at Duke. She's been here, it feels like, for a long time, but it's only been a couple of years and already made a lot of significant impacts and improvements for, for our team, so we're thankful for that. And Dr. Gary Bennett um, is our Vice Provost for Undergraduate Education. Um, not only is he a, a mentor and a friend, but also just somebody who deeply cares about the student experience here. And so we're excited that the two of them are joining us today. So without further ado, I'm gonna turn it over to my favorite picture of our student leaders and let Gary and Mary Pat take the floor. Um, good evening, everyone. Hope everyone is having a good uh, sort of November so far. Um, quick uh, shout out and thanks to Jordan and Grace and everybody in the new student and family programs team. They are working uh, to make sure that we just continue to be engaged and connected to all of our you know, uh, student family, students families. Um, I'm assuming there's a bunch of new student families here that, that there's a lot of first year families here, um, but everybody across the different um, class years. Um, you know, I'll just say too, just before we jump in, that this is a time of year where you are definitely sort of hearing from your student about transition, sort of um, adjustment, our sophomore class, our second year students, and our first years um, in a distinct moment, I think, in sort of adapting to Duke, adapting to academic work, adapting to all kinds of aspects of this. So just saying that as we know that you're probably kind of dialing into all kinds of aspects of your students experience right now, we're working to support them. Um, we're eager to support you in that effort as well. So um, nice to see you. And the other thank you that we'll just say um, as we start out here is that um, there's been a lot of folks that are very involved in this effort that we're going to roll out with you tonight um, from our board of trustees, the president and provost, our school deans, um, and hundreds of students who have been working with us over time. Parents were involved in our 2.0 stakeholder group last year, um, and parents have been involved in sort of offering sort of input on this process um, for several years. So thanks to everybody who's helped us get to a point where we're here to really start tonight. 
Indeed, this has been a multi-year labor of love, uh, which we'll describe a bit more in, uh, in just a few minutes. And so certainly our, our thanks to all of you who've contributed and thanks in advance to those of you who will give us uh, additional thoughts as, the, as the, uh, we move forward. But we're gonna break this presentation into three sections. We're gonna start by sharing the context, um, which is that our residential experience has been and continues to be an essential part of our ability to deliver on Duke's core promise uh, and we, as an institution, have a rich history of evolving and adapting with the times. Then we'll describe the structure of this plan, and that is um, that we're designing Quadex to meet the needs and interests of a different generation of Duke students while maintaining all the qualities of the kind of classic uh, Duke experience. Uh, and then we're going to describe the path forward, which, which will involve us rolling out programmatic components over the next couple of years. And then we'll stop and take some of your questions. Um, so Quadex is the name of our uh, next generation living and learning experience. Um, Duke became uh, Trinity, Trinity, Trinity College became Duke University in 1924. Um, we're about to celebrate our 100 year investiture. Um, and by 1932, our iconic West Campus, including the chapel and our original Gothic quads were built. Um, pretty quick turnaround time there. The quads have served as the crossroads for community at Duke ever since. Um, so Quad X refers to the centrality of quads in our plan um, to ensure that all Duke undergraduates fully belong and thrive at Duke. You know, also refers to our quad model, exciting the potential in our first students, extending supports throughout from first year all the way through once four years, um, experiencing meaningful connections. And one of my favorite things is um, in the student newsletter right now, um, the, the sort of feedback the week it starts out with, are you quad excited yet? And we're, we are hoping that our students are gaining more and more excitement around being a part of this. Um, and then, uh, you know, Jordan, if you want to go to slide three right here, that'd be great. Thank you. Thank you. So, so Duke's longstanding promise is to deliver its students a transformative undergraduate education and experience. And from our very start, we've evolved and adapted to achieve our strategic goals and to try to meet the needs of the students who were before us. Now, one of my favorite examples of this is back in 1896, Washington Duke pledged $100,000 to Trinity College with the proviso that women be admitted to the college and be put on an equal footing with men. And Mr. Duke's gift then enabled the construction of one of the first co-educational residences uh, in, in the country and certainly one of the first in the Southeast. Our, our history at Duke reflects a restless ambition for us to align on our key values to serve students who will go on to make meaningful contributions in their service to society. So with that, we're gonna take a little bit of a journey through history to see some critical milestones over the last 100 years. Um, yeah, so if we look here, you can see this timeline that sort of walks through kind of elements of Duke's history. I mentioned housing for women in 1898. Um, you know, in September, we celebrated uh, the dedication of the Reuben Cook Building, and Wilhelmina Reuben Cook was one of the first five Black undergraduates to start at Duke in the fall of 1963. Um, the university um, you know, merged with Trinity, Trinity College and the Women's College merged in 1972, um, and as you can see, sort of our profile of students and experience sort of have shifted from there. Um, recent conversations I've had with 1980s grads added to this timeline, the restless ambition that uh, President Sanford um, described Duke as having what Gary just referenced in the 1980s. Um, and we know that that sort of is kind of coming home and sort of continuing to sort of make Duke a global um, sort of national and sort of you know, distinct voice in higher education. Our student residential housing model has always heralded what's coming next for us at Duke. So the first year experience on, on East Campus established in the 1990s, at the time controversial, and then more, 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 more recently recognized as transformative as a way of delivering support um, for our students. And so it was the goal of the Next Generation Living and Learning Task Force, which was charged by uh, President Price and chaired by Betsy Holden to take up the next chapter in this evolution. And if you go forward to the next slide, please. Um, and the goal was to try to understand how Duke should evolve its residential system to meet the needs of future generations of Duke students. Um, now, the task force made a whole series of recommendations in a, in a variety of areas. It recommended that we organize our existing houses into vibrant neighborhoods, which would allow us to create larger, more diverse communities. Uh, it suggested that we enhance faculty engagement in all aspects of the residential experience. 
that we develop life skills learning modules. think of these as like co-curricular courses that could help to enhance knowledge of personal discovery, well-being, citizenship, life skills, career skills. ah it suggested that we determine how selective groups would relate to housing moving forward and we've been engaging in stakeholder communication almost continuously since the submission of that report in twenty nineteen you see a number of the really key moments here i'll just point you to to the two point zero committee which was a committee really focused on implementation that mary pat and i chaired uh, that we charged and it was chaired by john blackshear uh, and a young alum linda zhang who was absolutely terrific that two point zero committee um, ultimately provided recommendations for us connecting our east and our west uh, campus houses, enhancing faculty student engagement and intellectual exploration in the residences, and helped us think a bit more about how to center our strategies for inclusion and belonging. And again, we've been speaking with students and faculty and trustees and alums and parents for the duration of this time, including after the submission of that 2.0 report as we pulled together a, a full implementation plan and developed Quadex, which you'll hear more about tonight. And next slide, please. Uh, I think one back, please. Okay. Well, you can go up one for it then. <laughs> so before we talk about the model itself, let's talk a little bit about our student body. Um, you know, I know many of, of our families uh, have a history uh, with Duke, and um, those of us who are alums frequently say, whenever we're back on campus, we're, we're just a very different. Duke today than we have been even a relatively short time ago. Um, you know, that you see some of the indications here. We've become an extraordinarily selective institution at the same time that we've become a much more diverse institution. Um, and, you know, I, I'd see that despite those changes um, in the sort of character of the, inst of the, of the institution, um, it's really our distinctive Duke identity that binds Dukies across two generations. We are proud of the fact that students love it here. Um, we're hardworking, we're spirited, we're fun to be around, and we're really committed to our passions. And our goal with Quadex is to make sure that this very different group of students is supported personally and intellectually, and that they have the same kind of social energy and spirit that has long characterized uh, the Duke student body. I had some connection trouble there for a second, but can you hear me now? We've got you. Okay, and so uh, Gary, I'm jumping in, and you tell me if I if I missed this. Um, but one of the things is that over time, we've learned that our West Campus residential system has underserved many of our students at Duke. Um, we had a selective living group program. Um, lots of changes to it um, in the pandemic and previous to the pandemic. Um, the, the challenge with it is that it emphasized selectivity and exclusion, sometimes purely for exclusion's sake. Um, and when I got to Duke in um, the fall of 2019, um, it was a clear element of sort of here's, here's, a, here's a task for the new leadership and thinking about how our students live and learn here. Um, we really need to be sort of understanding sort of how to make every aspect of the sophomore year experience, the second half of the first year experience, significantly more um, healthy, um, supportive of all students and sort of allowing for students to continue to stretch and grow and make connections. Um, you know, I'm, you know, we'll get more into sort of how to help your kids thinking about connecting going forward into the next few months. Um, we, we, we have been looking and addressing very specifically the idea of keeping the windows and the opportunities for connection open for a much longer period of time. Um, you know, one of the conversations I had with my first year advisee this fall um, addressed this sort of question of selectivity at Duke and sort of the ways that our clubs and student organizations, this came up at family weekend um, when Gary and I talked and took questions from parents. Um, you know, my first year advisee said, um, you know, it's, it seems to me that you have to apply to have friends at Duke, right? And we are, we are really working with our student government to abend the pieces that live in the student organization world. And we know that the sort of live where you live and getting into a place to live as a, for, as a rising sophomore um, was one of the things we really needed to address here. So we did that. Yeah. You know, the focus on, on selectivity is really taken away from our ability to build intellectual experiences in the, in, and particularly co-curricular experiences into the residential setting, particularly after the first year. Uh, we recognized early on in this process, all the way back in the next generation living and learning experience days, that 
where we really had an opportunity to enhance the ah our blending of students learning pathways with their social life and their housing and so again our our task here is to try to build a system that retains duke's distinctive identity has a strong community has strong social ties but also invite students to lean into their intellectual lives and to share more broadly in the duke culture next slide please So, you know, President Price's strategic framework, which I hope you've had a chance to, to see, says that Duke should build a renewed campus community that promotes growth. This will be a healthier, more vibrant, and more inclusive environment for all of us, faculty, students, and staff who call Duke home. And Quadex builds on the strengths of our existing residential model. From the beginning, we framed this as really a good to great proposition. It's not a complete turnaround job. Um, rather, what we're trying to do here is to deliver on the promise of delivering a transformative education by helping to better prepare our students for the world that they'll inherit. It's a different time, it's a different Duke, and our students have a different set of needs in order to best serve society. So, next slide. So our goal with Quadex is that we are going to improve on our already uh, highly ranked residential system. Um, we in Quadex will feature a residential system that's characterized by seven quads on West Campus that will recenter social life on campus, help to promote intellectual opportunities for all of our undergraduates, align with the values and the spirit of Duke, and foster bonds that we hope will last a lifetime. Um, and our, our work here is designed to build a system that is flexible enough to meet today's, the needs of today's students, um, but also sufficiently flexible enough for us to be able to create opportunities and to deliver resources over the next several years. Your next slide. So this is um, sort of a, a set of things that are kind of core to the elements of Quadex and our structure. So we'll let folks take a, have a chance to take a look at this, sort of see these different aspects of it. Um, you know, East Campus houses will be permanently connected to associated West Campus quads. That information was released uh, last week. Um, each quad, as Gary said, develops its own identity with resources and supports. Um, one element of it is that we're really going to locate more resources and supports right on site um, in those West Campus quads. Our academic guide program has been in place as a proof of concept, um, and we're looking to embed other career development aspects, um, sort of uh, academic mentorship support, um, and, and sort of on site, sort of how you're going to how you're going to build program and design uh, aspects of the experience on the quads. That's all going to be part of that sort of embedded support. Um, as folks know, first years continue on East. Um, juniors and seniors, um, so in rising, rising sophomores now going into their junior year, uh, seniors have a little bit more flexibility. They can opt to stay in their quad next year if that's what they'd like to do in the housing process. Juniors um, are required to live on. As juniors, they could live at 300 Swift or off campus, I'm sorry, or in the hollows. Um, seniors can live off or live on, and the, the senior class um, next year will so, so say um, we want to be affiliated with our quad, but not living in it, or we want to stay in our quad as well. So there's a, there's a lot of sort of uh, structural efforts to put here. The takeaway, though, is that our enhanced quad based social and intellectual opportunities will extend the best of all of Duke's living and learning experiences to all of our students. And I will name for this parent group, you know, in a way that I don't usually um, that our terrific work on first year campus and providing those supports there's been a big gap, you know, the, the, the benefit to all your students as returning students next year will be um, just more sort of encounters um, in a deliberate and sort of proactive way with all the resources that Duke offers. Um, so um, if Jordan, if you don't mind going to the next slide. Um, here's the visual on sort of how we're thinking about this, right? So we believe that a transformative residential experience at Duke is made up of these two key components, right? The community strength. You've seen that, I hope, in action um, here at Duke, even as we've emerged from the pandemic and the intellectual exploration, the opportunity for students to really just run on these incredible um, sort of pathways through our dis academic disciplines, um, immersive experiences. Um, we're really getting back up to full full force of that this, this fall. We're looking forward to continuing that with your students. Um, but through Quadex, we want to foster consistent belonging so that our students don't have artificial barriers that have separated our intellectual opportunities um, and our engagement in housing and social life on campus. So this, this foundation allows us to better deliver on the transformative experience that Duke has to offer. So you know, we think about it as one plus one equals a lot more than two. And so we'll tell you a little bit about what we mean. Next slide, please. 
so admissions has shared with us that the name a common name for the class of twenty twenty five is cameron true story so i'm going to tell you a little bit about cameron so with with quad x the idea here is that everyone will feel welcome and part of this community from the first from day one and for us that really starts with the you know the moment you get into duke um and you know and you get, we want students to be excited about that moment but shortly thereafter they're going to hear about where what their quad is where they're going to live in their first year and they'll have a sense of what the quad is now you know our hope is that that down the road a bit, students will automatically know, have a sense of what those, what the identities are that travel along with their quad. You know, they'll they'll know the swag, they will uh, know the handshake, they may have even seen the dance from from TikTok. Um, before, over the summer, before she starts her first day at Duke, Cameron will get an email um, and it'll share with her kind of, you know, where, where she is going to be in the world. She'll start to hear from her quad mates and, and she'll start to find out where they like to hang out on campus and she'll start to get the swag, you know, in the mail. When she gets to campus, she'll know her housemates, she'll know the faculty and residents on East and she'll know the fellow first years on East through all of our usual uh, orientation activities, although we have a special, a special plan that Mary Pat will share in just a moment. Um, you know, when she gets to campus, she'll be invited to the barbecue on her upper class quad. She'll be invited to that barbecue on West, right? So we're starting to, we're starting to form those connections between East and West really from, from day one, where she won't only just meet her quad mates, but she'll meet the faculty affiliates, our rock star scholar teachers who um, we are appointing to, to, uh, to each one of the quads on West. Um, and they will start to engage with her. We'll share a little bit more about that in just a, a minute. Um, at the end of her first year, Cameron and her friends will move um, from brick to stone, uh, a ceremony where students will go from uh, sort of symbolically from East Campus, where we bricks to the stone of, of West Campus and transition from East to West. Cameron and her classmates will enter in that kind of very formal way, kind of an induction into the quads uh, on, on West Campus. Next slide, please. Um, so, you know, as a sophomore, we've got Cameron and her friends over on West, right? Um, and they'll have increased influence over the social intellectual direction of their quad. And the quads will be the center of social life at Duke. That's our design here. We're working on our alcohol policies, our event hosting policies, the way we fund student initiated events right now so that that can be a really robust component of the West Campus experience right now. Um, West Campus experience next year, a little different than it is now. We, we have work to do in this respect. A lot of our social um, experiences for students happen off campus or very far off campus. So part of our goal is to recalibrate um, and, and involve students in setting up a much more dynamic West Campus social culture. Um, but Cameron can also get involved in parties, uh, dinners, alumni speakers, events that she and her friends can dream up. Um, we have a budget assigned to this so that the students control the funds um, with advice and sort of help in sort of figuring out how to make things happen. Um, we also will have class-wide initiatives. Sophomore Spark will be piloted this spring for the class of 2024. We're very excited about sort of kicking that off. Um, and there's more information to come on that in the next few weeks. Um, but then we want to get to a class-wide all sophomore event um, and actually a series of events where the whole sophomore class in their many decision points, choosing a major, um, thinking about sort of study abroad or not, thinking about sort of purpose behind their, their sort of pathway. There's again, that first year experience is one part, a lot of decision points in the second year. Um, so we'll have programs that sort of go across the whole, whole class for that as well. Um, I will note that sort of, you know, the select process, I've referenced this already, but it's changed quite a bit in the past couple of years. Um, Previously, we had selective living groups, um, and next year will be the last year that we have SLGs um, as part of our residential structure on, on West Campus. Living and learning communities will continue. That's, that's a sort of distinct from the, from the groups that are designed um, as sort of just selective for selectivity's sake. Um, and we've been really heartened by some of the response from some, of our, from some of our SLGs that are looking for ways to incorporate their effort, incorporate what they do with us on West. So there's some really fantastic partnership happening with students in that that respect. Um, yeah, thank you. Um, next slide. As I mentioned, each of our quads will have faculty uh, who will be members of the quad uh, and whose presence will support the intellectual life of the quad in partnership with our students. Now, these faculty will not live in the quad as they do on East Campus, but they'll get to know their quad members on a deeper level, having conversations and discussion groups, book readings, uh, uh, dinner meetings, those kinds of things. Uh, a wide variety of experiences that Cameron will have with her, with her quad mates and her faculty. Um, I'll note that these faculty, as I, as I said earlier, are really our best scholar teachers. We're very excited to start to tell you about some of these colleagues um, who are 
many of whom are jumping at the chance to have a greater, richer, deeper involvement with with students outside of the classroom and this is it's just going to be terrific for our students. um now juniors and seniors as mary pat mentioned irrespective of whether they live if they decide to live in the quad great if they decide to live in more apartment style housing on campus that also is fine but they'll have access to the quad based events resources and including these interactions with their faculty next please Um, so um, we talked a little bit about connections across class years and the upper class students reaching back to share in the traditions in the community of the quad. We've been excited about alumni response to what we're what we're planning and having the ability for any of you who are Duke alums can say I lived in Wanamaker, you know, put me in the Wanamaker affiliate database. Um, we're working about we're thinking about speakers and programs that can support alumni engagement and sort of like those those sort of really rich ties to the sort of folks who've been through Duke before. Um, we're really we're quite excited. You know, our goal is to have people stop and see somebody in, somewhere in the country in, or around the world in their Duke gear um, and have that sort of, hey, did you go to Duke? When did you graduate? Um, what quad were you in? And that, that, that sort of component of sort of breaking the community um, into sort of real intergenerational um, connection. We're so excited. And then next slide, please. So we know that many aspects um, make up a transformative undergraduate experience at Duke, um, both inside and outside of the classroom. Um, you know, you can see here we've got all these sort of pieces sort of graphed out, you know, the study abroad, athletics, the arts. Um, we also know that the on-campus residential experience is the essential component that pulls all these pieces together and again helps our students take the, all the promise of a liberal arts education and turn it into something that really shapes their pathway and their sort of understanding and their, their social and personal connections the rest of their lives. Um, we want this experience to be as inspiring and engaging and as fun as the rest of the extraordinary experiences that students have here at Duke. Um, we already have this strong foundational structure. As Gary said, it's a good to great proposition. Um, by evolving the structure through Quadex, um, we really are looking forward to elevating our students' social and intellectual development and having things um, you know, transform from here. Next, please. Um, so this year, our teams are deeply engaged in implementing various elements of Quadex. So if you look here, groups of students, faculty, and staff are working to sort of implement and sort of hammer out the details. We've got things in pencil, and then we've got things in pen right now as far as how the policies and frameworks are going to work. Um, We've had 15 student focus groups this semester meeting with student organizations and top of that, um, really seen great engagement on our student of the week, our question of the week, um, sort of response from students. Most recently, the block system number was pulled to our students and we went with the options they gave and we are having students move from east to west in blocks of up to eight uh, friends across the, you know, across the, across their assigned quad. Um, Aquatics Advisory Council has been formed, announced last week your student can apply through DSG through November 19th to be a part of that. Um, and even later tonight, there's an information session on East Campus tomorrow night, sorry, to answer student questions about the pairings that we announced last week. Um, so your students will see lots of opportunities from here to engage that way. Next, please. So you've, you've heard us tonight and um, talk a lot about selectivity and that's, that's by design. It's actually not not our choice as much as it is really the clamoring of our students over the last couple of years. Um, and you know, it, it's for good reason. I, I'm, I'm fond of telling our colleagues that it's, it's only mildly hyperbolic to suggest that to get into Duke, you have to go through one of the most arduous selection processes known in human history. Um, and indeed, all of your students have run that gauntlet and, um, and been selected. And the challenge is that after you go through that selection process, students face even more in intense competition for membership in co-curriculars and extracurricular activities and experiential opportunities, really the kinds of things that characterize the Duke experience. You know, if, if the last 25 years in higher education, not just at Duke, but at other elite institutions have been about rampant selectivity in our organizations, in our residences, in our clubs, in our activities, now we think the next generation uh, can and should be focused on belonging. And we think this can be a differentiator for Duke. Um, we will always need selectivity for things like the quintet, the dance team, athletics. Um, but our business clubs, our co-curriculars, our experiential opportunities, 
um, our vision is for a duke where is where the norm is for all members of our community to accept and include and for us to really ask the question um, really all of us students staff faculty um, but why are we adopting these selective processes um, what utility uh, do they have and as you know we've done many times in the past with co-educational housing with the formation of east campus we think that duke should leverage its residences to foreground its strategic interests and our key values belonging formation of intellectual communities creating diverse social engagements um, in summary you know it should always be hard to get into duke but it shouldn't be hard to thrive once you get here um, you know, you know we, we are, as I said before, we're looking at different ways that our policies and our sort of like event hosting event programs can really sort of make, you know, undergird and support students feeling like the West Campus experience is theirs, um, that they are focused on sort of including uh, first years and East Campus students in, in that effort. Um, a couple of exciting things, you know, I, I had um, uh, office hours coffee with a with a student on the fact board, um, which is that group that sort of welcomes everybody. So I'm in the picture bringing everybody in. And the student said to me that they really sat down last night and recognized that this is happening for next year. And they started getting their heads around. OK, so what's it going to be? And the student described to me as, as this. He goes, first, we had this moment where we all realized this is really happening. Um, then we went through a phase where we talked about all the challenges. And then we started to brainstorm and we got really excited. Um, we've seen the same thing happen with our East Campus Council. We've seen that happen with students figuring out where the pairings are and sort of finding ways. I think over Halloween weekend, um, there were East Campus and West Affiliate events hosted based on the stuff that had gotten leaked earlier in the semester about pairings, but they've run ahead and started doing that. That's so Duke. It's such a fantastic, you know, as Gary said before, we want to pull the best of Duke through in this process and having our students be innovative, entrepreneurial. How can we do this and make it amazing? is the way we want to we want to we want to seed the ground get out of the way help them sort of do that just as the students said tonight really brainstorm and get really excited so we're looking forward to going going forward from here i'll just add that you know i always people often particularly dukies ask you know what what is it what is it about duke that makes our students really distinctive and i'll usually answer that dukies get things done um, and you may we may go through these these series of processes, but ultimately we're the folks who you want to call when you when you when you want to get get something done. And and so our partnership, the close partnership with students, is not just um, designed to ensure that that this meets their needs, but this is really an educational process for us, where we're working with students to help them to understand how you build change, how you mount these kinds of responses, and how you architect and in some cases redesign really complex systems to ensure that we're doing what we can for all of our students. Next slide, please. So, you know, as we move towards our second century, Duke will do what we have always done, and that's to build upon the best of our past and look firmly towards the future. Um, we are an institution that has long been engaged in reinvention, and we're, we're moving ahead in that direction as well. Um, we're just to tie this back to President Price's strategic framework, um, where he has argued that our true value proposition uh, moving forward will be our human infrastructure. So if for that to be true, then Duke has to prepare our students uh, for a future world in which they'll inherit. So we've designed Quadex to provide this renewed campus residential community in which our students will grow and thrive both now and in the years to come. And with that, we will stop presenting and look forward to taking your questions. Great. Thank you all so much for doing that and for taking some time to share this info. Uh, we have quite a few questions in here and I'm gonna do my best to kind of clump them in categories and then we'll we'll kind of give generic responses to those categories of questions. So one of the first themes that I see is this piece that you all kind of talked about this a little bit, but like why now? Why kind of make this move now? Why make the decision to uh, implement this idea at this time? And so if you can give some responses to that, I think that would help clear some things up for some folks. Yeah, and I and I saw, I think I glanced and saw a little bit of sort of like, wouldn't have been better if like 2026 could have known this was what was common. Um, and I, I, I see that. Um, so so a couple of things. Um, I think, you know, I, I'm, I'm feeling like if I'm a parent for a class of 2025 student, I've got a kid who's been through a ton of transition, right? So my kids started Duke at the end of the pandemic, had a senior year that was all pandemic, had a junior in high school, or I had a kid who had a gap year and senior year plus the gap year have been, you know, very unlike what, what the family had planned would be the case um, for your kid's pathway. So I, I, I take some of the question, some of the question around that, around hasn't there been enough sort of transition and change for, for, for my kid and for the other kids in the class of 2020? 
memory fat. Um, I would do you a great disservice if I said, you know what we're going to do is we're going to keep things sort of where they were for the class of 2025. I, I wish there was a different way I could say it to you. Um, the the structures, the 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 I'm going to try not to over dramatize and Gary, you're gonna to have to make a face at me if I do this the wrong way. Okay. Um, but the, the extent to which we have years and years and years of data um, from every student, from the way they were successful, quote unquote, in getting into an SLG, unsuccessful and feeling like that was probably about 40% of our students who felt like they didn't get any option and they either wanted it or didn't want it. Um, we we know that our that our student body and, and I would encourage you to have your your kid ask somebody who's a senior or who graduated in 2020 2019 2018 you know I talked to the president of Pan Hellenic the president of the whole sorority system who graduated in 2019 previewed the whole thing with her and she goes Mary Pat it is time for this you know we've known I said I thought you as the president of the Pan Hell would tell me something different that you really feel like I'm taking something away or we're taking something away the system is it's not me um, and she goes Mary Pat that's the cards we got that's what we were dealt and we had we had to deal with what, what you gave us this you know this is a lot better so i i think that i recognize the sort of sense of it's a lot of change for my kid i and you, you don't have to trust me on this um i but we do have we have years of data that show us that what we were doing before um, was probably the biggest pain point in our student experience. I would not ask um, your students who've been through so much to go through something like that. We're concerned about ways that everybody's sort of readjusting to the world. That wouldn't have been, it wouldn't have been good. I don't know how else to tell you, um, but it's the right time for the same reasons that folks are feeling that way. Um, you know, that, yeah, I don't Gary, what I leave out. Not a thing. All right, thank you, Mary Pat, for, for chiming in there and giving that perspective that was helpful. Um, the next series of questions really revolves around the community building aspects of this and some um, excitement, but I think also concerns about if my son or daughter or my child doesn't find the roommate that they want or they meet somebody else who lives in another quad and they want a room together. Can you all just kind of speak to that a little bit and some of the opportunities there? Yeah, you want me to start and then and then keep going. Okay. Um, so yeah, so I've I've seen we've gotten this question in most rooms as well over the course of the fall. Um, and I, I'll sort of say a couple things. So I I was the director of residential life um, at a college for for a while in the in the twenty aughts. Um, I I was part of the housing process at the last university I worked. I've been here. I was the student captain of housing when I was an undergrad and my undergrad experience, and then I helped with that. So I've been doing college housing, student housing, um, for about twenty five years. Um, the the sort of the elements that I would like to sort of name around sort of figuring out sort of housing for next year. Um, there's gonna be some feeling of, you know, who am I going to live with? How's it going to work out? Um, there will be some first round sort of operational, I think these are my people. And then as the next couple of weeks and months unfold, there's going to be some more conversations around with who, you know, like who's, who are the right folks for me, you know, and then a lot happens. We saw it last year um, when we did this sort of um, very different housing assignment process because students didn't want to do a lottery. So we built something with student government and did something really interesting at Duke. Um, probably designed to minimize the last minute changing, and we still had plenty of last minute changes. So this process of figuring out, once you're assigned to a roommate, it's one thing. And then when you figure out who you're gonna live with, um, that, that takes some, some skill building, it takes some conversations, it, it's, a, it's a real process. Um, and folks, parents are gonna be, family members are gonna be in it with your kid um, in a way. So that's a sort of preference of like, this is a movable thing, um, unrelated to the question of like, can I live with, you know, which, which from, how am I gonna find my roommates in the sort of question of like, you know, how am I gonna get, if, if it's not, if there's not anybody in my, in my first year residence hall or the one I'm affiliated with in my quad, what do I do? Um, I've said this in a couple of rooms, I'll say it here. Um, you know, there, there's going to have to be some way at the end of this process where folks are, this, these are truly the people I need to be with. We got to figure out a way for, for students to be able to sort of get with the students that they spend the most amount of time with um, in, the, in the quad where they belong. So that we, but I can imagine scenarios where we'll have examples of that. We are not leading with that now because we want to give students the guide and framework around um, you're going to be paired with your, with your quad and your affiliates um, and we'll sort of and we'll go from there. Um, in the previous system, I learned something I'd not seen in housing or across multiple institutions, which was that students would deliberately 
not be friends with one another in their first year residence hall because they were sort of angling and thinking about, okay, I'm going to go for this SLG. You might go for that SLG. So we are not going to be, um, you know, we actually think we could be friends, but we don't want to because we're going to sort of, we're going to predict where we might end up. Um, so there's, there's, I think we had the reverse challenge to this, I guess, um, in previous times. So we're going to, we're going to work with our students. If you have an individual student who is feeling like, oh my gosh, this Quad X thing is not going to work, please send them to their faculty and residence, send them to their RA, and please send them over to um, the folks in residential life, because we will work with them and help them figure out what the best options are. I don't want folks, I don't want our students to feel like totally marooned here. Um, and I think that 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 conversation is going to be one that we want to really sort of stand up for and be, be present with your student on. Gary, what I miss? Well, I'll just add that, um, you know, a, a the, the last answer you gave was a was really helpful one in particular, Mary Pat, that, you know, Students will have hundreds of other peers to choose from as a very practical matter in identifying with their roommates. And, and as you just noted, there will be an off-ramp solution for students who experience any difficulty finding uh, someone among those hundreds of students. Um, and I'll just say that one of, the, one of the fortunate challenges of implementing a program like this is that people very quickly forget what came before. And I'll just note that the model that we had before was one that was fraught with complexity and fraught with uncertainty and led to no small amount of difficulty um, as students tried to traverse the campus and identify where they could live and with whom and with whom they were gonna block and which organization they needed to join to identify housing in the, the next year and which friends they should have in order to have the best chance at house. It was, a, it was social engineering in some respects to find um, to help to, to calm some of that uncertainty. And, and that's one of the key points of data that have been remarkably consistent over the last decade that we are really trying to work, work with here. There are a lot of reasons why Quadex is not a residential college model. And if there's interest in kind of exploring that in more detail, we can. But I will say that we've learned a lot from residential colleges, which, which by and large adopt this very kind of system where students move with their with folks that they identify in their first year into residential colleges in second in su subsequent years and by and large what you find when we talk to our peers at the best performing uh, residential college systems is that students wind up not having trouble finding peers when they know in advance that that's going to be what it is um, and that those are relationships you're trying to find people in adjacent areas who are your people um, and that providing them the ability to move together with that group into their quads is, is actually a recipe for success in these models. Um, it's, and it's one that we think is going to resolve a lot of the concern. And, it's, and again, we're building this based not only on our own data, but on the data that we are gathering from peers that have moved before us. To kind of build on that piece with peers, um, Dr. Bennett, we have a really um, interesting question about how this sounds like an amazing opportunity um, and that other institutions around the country are doing this, places like Yale, Princeton, other places. So um, what have you all done? Have you been doing your kind of data mining and research and thinking about this? What have you learned from other partners of things to potentially do and the things to also stay away from? Well, I've, I've learned that we're, you know, Duke is far better than those other institutions you mentioned, but they say that as an old with my alum cap on. Um, I'll just, I'll note that we have done really, you know, we, we are friends and friendly with many of our, our folks in our seats at our peer institutions, and we've spent no amount of time uh, vetting this with them and exploring their data. Um, back in the NGLLE days, uh, we had 16 or 18 interactions with other peer institutions to try to understand the aspects of the sort of design of these kinds of residential systems that really lead to uh, best outcomes for our students. We were very fortunate to recruit Mary Pat, who with her team brings a wealth of experience uh, at, a, at different institutions. And so I should say that we are, we are leveraging, as we should, um, the kind of distinctly Duke need to provide, again, for that kind of social and intellectual support, but also retaining our social identity. We are doing all of those things, but we're also trying to extract best practices from our peer institutions. I do want to note, this is not a residential college system. And one of the real differentiators, um, at least in my mind, between a residential college system at some of the institutions you just mentioned, Jordan, and what we'll have here in Quadex, is that we won't have dining facilities in our residences anytime soon. And so, you know, it's possible at some residential college systems to spend all or most of your time really embedded within that college and have limited opportunities for exploring peer relationships and socialization in other colleges. Um, that won't be the case here. 
um and by design in many respects. students will come together to eat, they will come together in our multi-purpose facilities to interact we are planning social engagements and we'll set up systems that support social social mixing, social interactions, we're planning competitions between the quads. we really want dookies to be dookies um and to have that distinctive quad identity. Um, you know, just to add a couple of things, just so since we're in the topic of sort of like what's what's the same and what's different from the other spots, um, we um, we have a very strong four-year residential model right now, right? So our social life might be off campus, but our residential life has, you know, last year in the pandemic being quite the exception, um, most years we have a high percentage of juniors on campus. We have some juniors that ask to move off in, in, depending on how our volume is past years. Um, and we have a high percentage, percentage of seniors who live on campus. So we have a four-year residential model and we, 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 we know that that's a point of pride. I can sort of break down the top 28 schools and all their off-campus and on-campus rates over the years. Um, but we also have um, a sort of a, a cohesiveness about sort of loving being a part of Duke and sort of, you know, yeah, I, you know, this is not a claim I can substantiate, but I'm going to claim it anyways, which is, I think if you walk around our campus and see the sort of pride of place for Duke, you know, the t-shirts, the sweatshirts, um, sort of, you know, at, when we were in the pandemic early on, as we did student meetings, every kid had a Duke poster in their bedroom. Right. And I've worked at a lot of places. People don't have the poster behind them on the Zoom screen in their bed. Like this place has this sort of deep connection. It's been one of the, it was one of the reasons we did as well as we did in getting the campus to sort of mask up, stay distanced, um, fill, out, fill out Simon and do all the incredible things that our students uh, pulled together to do last year. We are a cohesive community. So we also know that, that that's distinct to us. And that's something we weren't, QuadX allows us to have people have residential belonging, but this, this has come up in other presentations we've done. We are building on that sort of like people love this place. They love being a part of it. Um, and the sort of the sort of core piece of it, um, that's, that's, that's that's going to generate us and sort of keep us successful. As I said before, that sort of student in initiative and energy that we've seen so far, that creative brainstorming, it's going to be a big part of this too. Great, thank you. Um, we got about uh, 10 minutes or so left. So we'll hit a couple more questions. One of them is actually, you mentioned Mary Pat at the beginning that we might have a lot of first year parents on here, but it looks like we have quite a few sophomore and junior parents on here as well. So can we just talk about the sophomore and junior pieces to this and um, maybe where the, how, the opportunities to find roommates and those kind of things or where they might be able to connect with Quadex and be on campus? This is going to be the time that I actually invite Chris Rossi to go off camera um, and come in on this because he's been more connected to the junior and senior component of this. Um, and so just talk a little bit about how we think about juniors and seniors and their housing. Uh, Chris is assistant vice president and he oversees the housing residential life team, our residential facilities and our strategic plan. Hi friends, thanks so much for allowing me to join. Thanks for joining us here tonight. Jordan, I was in the chat answering people's questions while you were talking. So could you repeat the question for me, please? Sorry, Chris, uh, I know you're working hard on both sides of this, but it's it's the connection for sophomores and juniors to the Quadex uh, model. So how are they gonna be connected? What's their gonna be, uh, their opportunities to connect on campus or residential opportunities, those sorts of things. Current sophomores and juniors. Correct. So, yeah. Um, excellent question. Um, I may have answered this a, a few times in the chat. So thank you for those who are posing an important question. So uh, because our quads vary in size and we cannot fit all of our juniors and seniors in all of the Gothic quads, there's a certain percentage of beds that are allotted and available for juniors and seniors to select. As we go through the housing lottery process here in year one, students can form their blocks of eight, of up to eight, any configuration one to eight. We can form their blocks and then select into any of the buildings that Mary Pat had just described previously during the presentation. That can include spaces in our Gothic quads, um, but can also include 300 Swift and the hollows. Uh, and in this first year, uh, this is an opportunity that uh, we find that our current sophomores and juniors are excited about. It gives them some flexibility of choice and then also allows them to continue to participate in the Gothic quads and some of the things we're talking about as they see fit. Um, so happy to continue to answer questions in the chat, um, and thanks for inviting me. Thanks, Chris. And I'll, I'll mention that one of the things we're anticipating next year as we think about, you know, study abroad decisions and sort of like how students think about what the, you know, there's lots of different vectors around sort of junior and senior housing elements. And so we're factoring in for all of that as we, as we sort of build out our capacities too. Great. I was going to save this for the end, but there have been several questions. So I'll go ahead and ask it now. There have been several questions about how can, which is exciting, I think, for us to, to see and hear, 
how can parents and families be involved uh, in this process? They seem to think that there's a lot of positive things from this, so how, whether it's communicating with their student, whether it's giving us feedback and opportunities, how can they be involved in this process to continue the success of what Aquatics is going to be? Well, de depending on your relationship with your student, uh, you can decide whether or not you tell your student you like it or not. Uh, if my parents told me they liked it, I might have looked a little quizzically at the whole thing, but that's it. Um, you know, I think, I think that a couple things. One is that this is a really exciting opportunity for a generational change in the Duke culture and community, right? Like this is this is a um, this is an important change, and it's one that's going to lead, we imagine, to much higher levels of of engagement and excitement on the campus. And um, and if you have an opportunity to talk with your student about it, I would suggest that. You know, I've been telling our students that um, that this Quadex offers you three things you're looking for. One is choice. Lots of choice in, in, in your roommates, more, more and better options for blocking with the people who are your people and care a lot about. It offers you a measure of certainty that has just not been part of the Duke experience in the last 25 years, um, and frankly, isn't part of the fabric of a lot of institutions' uh, residential systems. You will, have, you will know um, right away where you're going to be and where you can be. And if you decide, as Chris was getting into, if you decide that you know junior senior year you want to have more of an apartment style uh, experience with your closest friends, you don't have to move off campus to have that. You can still stay on campus and align with your quad uh, and staying at you know in three in, in the halls or three one Swift. I mean, it's a very very flexible model that offers you certainty, but also offers you some choice. And then the last thing is that that it offers a great deal of fun. And I say that as you know as the professor in the group who primarily is charged with thinking about how to how to enhance the intellectual engagement and connections with faculty and those kinds of things. The alum in me wants to tell you that I want the social life back on campus and I want our students to look to our quads literally and figuratively as their first options for engaging with their peer with their peers. And this year I have started to get a glimpse of what Quadex will be as the student affairs team has launched some really fantastic parties that pull students together from all aspects of the campus, all different walks of life, all different backgrounds, you know, unified on the dance floor, dancing poorly to bad music together. Like that is the quintessential college experience and that's what we need back and that's what we're going to build. Um, you know, I, I can't, there's not much I can add to that. I, I'm going to expand the question to, I think, how can you help your kid in the fall of 2021, right? Um, if you've got a senior, if you've got a first year, if you've got a sophomore, if you've got a junior, um, this is a unique moment. We're noticing a lot around sort of, you know, resumption of in-person exams, or, you know, no more open book, you know, Zoom-based testing. Um, we're noticing that just that sort of like um, kind of carrying component of just being around a lot of people all the time after having, you know, our students love it and they're as overwhelmed as the rest of us are um, by sort of being back in sort of like so many common experiences and sort of um, serendipitous contact and sort of random random encounters. Um, and I think, you know, what I often say to families um, at New Student Weekend, I think I people have probably heard me say it before, for, which is um, that you're going to be the sort of recipient. Um, and I think my it's a theory, I can't prove it, but I think juniors and senior parents, uh, sophomore parents are hearing more from their kid about sort of change. And they got they got more connected to home, many of them, you know, in the past year, you're hearing more, you're getting more for more of a window on sort of how am I navigating? How am I doing? They, you know, they hang up with you or they, they put down their, their thumbs away and they stop texting you. And then they set up a plan with somebody else. I think there's a, there's an element of that in our sort of experience right now. Um, my experience is telling me that my my eyes and ears and talking with students on a regular basis on campus um so to that question you know how can how can you help your kid in this particularly unique moment of late pandemic return to a lot but not quite back to where we thought we were going to be and what have we learned right in that moment um please encourage your student to seek out conversations with mentors mentors adults faculty members, advisors right now. Um, our advisors are excited to sit down and sort of have conversations. Um, you know, the Flunch program is back. Students can sit, you know, take their faculty member to lunch um, in the commons. And, you know, it's covered by the provost office. Um, our, you know, our office hours and different aspects
aspects of getting your students to sort of say, where is there an opportunity here to put, lift my hand, raise, raise my voice, get involved, um, sort of think about quadex, right? Quadex might be the vehicle for some of that adaptation. And some of it's just sort of like the life in the moment we're in right now. I've been doing this. I've been working with college kids um, straight through 1997 to right now. There's not been a time quite like this. Um, and even last year and even the spring of 2020, we're in a time like this. So your role, if you can help us in helping your students sort of understand like, when can I go talk to somebody? How do I do that? How do I, how do I get in there? I would really guide them to us um, and to resources to our colleagues. Um, Quadex might be the way to do it, right? Like it might be something that you can say, you know, we are looking for current students to help us shape something. We will take their feedback. We are constantly iterating with students right now. Um, so we'd love to have your kid um, as a sort of partner and ambassador. And we'd love parents to be involved in sort of feedback forum. We've, we've been doing a lot of different ways for, for parents, but what we really could use is your help in helping them feel like they've got um, agency um, and sort of resources and control here right now. Great, thank you. Just kind of thumbing through the question, seeing if there are any more broad themes. I think we've hit on most of them, but I think if we could do a concluding piece, there seems to be um, just quite a bit of a sentiment and thoughts around uh, the ability for Quadex to be inclusive versus exclusive. And I know you all talked about it a little bit, but I'd love if you all could just give your uh, additional thoughts about how this is really an inclusive opportunity as opposed to excluding students. I think that context would be really helpful for us and for our families as well. I, I, you know, I can state it simply, and again, I'm, you'll forgive me, but I'm going to put my alum hat back on. And um, for the for the time that I've been here, and there have always been a segment of students who've had a remarkably good residential experience here. And um, what we're doing with Quadex is learning from what worked for those students and exporting it for all of our students. We want the default experience at Duke to be an absolutely terrific residential experience. It is in the first year right now. And we want that to run right on through students for years here. That's all we're doing with Quadex. And if students have a little bit of fun along the way, that's that's even better. Yeah, um, you know, not too much from my end to, to add to this. I will I will just sort of kind of relift the and I don't want to end on a negative, but I'll relift it. So we we probably had the most exclusive um, and, and sort of kind of limiting uh, residential experience. We've done studies, we've had people come look. Again, there's lots of data. Um, so we're kind of moving away from something that um, was particularly um, sort of built on selectivity for selectivity's sake. Um, and so un, unspooling that um, is a is a big part of how we're gonna how we're how, how we're making the claim. Um, but as Gary says, sort of building from here and getting that sort of innovation, collaboration, and partnership. Um, that's how we're going. That's we're going. That's how we're going to sort of demonstrate it and show, not tell. Right. Well, thank you both. I really appreciate it. I also know for for families, to know that our team and new student and family programs have the privilege of welcoming your students. So we're connected to this quite X piece. The students come in with our orientation programs and what we're looking to do there. And then also as students trans, uh, uh, transition to their sophomore campus experience into West Campus. And so um, you'll be hearing a lot from us about how you can be connected. And we're excited to kind of build this program along with um, Gary, Mary, Pat, and others here on campus. So uh, to honor everybody's time, we do want to say thank you for jumping on and joining us. Uh, this has been recorded. Thank you all for all of your questions. Uh, we'll look to do our next webinar series, most likely in January. We're going to give December a rest. Um, so look out for some communication from our office, and we will see you all soon. Be safe and have a good evening. Go do.